view in this next video here, what we're going to be working on is essentially continuing to this end goal. So we worked on creating this um, this kind of tabbed view right here, and the tabbed view has a home page, has a search page. But if you remember, we're actually trying to make this playlist page. So the end goal, we're going to try to essentially try to recreate this entire app in its entirety. But for now, let's go ahead and stick with working on the playlist page. So we're going to create a new file, file, and we're going to pick a Swift UI view. We're going to name it Content Item Viewer. And I chose Content Item Viewer, not just like Playlist Page, because this is going to be the same. We're going to use the same page to create, whether it be how us browsing an album, an artist, a playlist. It's all going to be similar. So we'll say Create. And here we are once more back to the Hello World screen. So notice we have all these different. Let's go ahead and put Content View, Content Item Viewer. Home page and search page. Let's take all of those right here and let's add those to a group. So new group. We'll call this one views. Okay. Drag those, drop them in views so we kind of stay a little more organized. Ignore these delegates for now, okay? We'll, we'll get to those eventually. So let's go ahead and just keep our eye on content item viewer. Let's click resume. We're not looking at content viewer, home page, or search page. We're just looking at content item viewer. So right now we're back to the hello world page. So the way it works is this screen, this simulator, and your phone, when, when something is coded in SwiftUI, it's looking to display a view, okay? So a view item, to text is a type of a view item, an image is a type of a view item, but it's looking for one view item. So it starts to get upset when I tell it, hey, show me Hello World and Hello World 2. If I click Try Again, I'm going to get an error here. Let's see what this error tells us, word for word. See if we can get it to spit out the exact issue. As it tries to do that, I'll begin to explain the issue. So it's looking for one view. So what we can do is if we want to add things on top of each other, we need to start stacking them. Now what does stacking mean? Let's go ahead and change the words here to can of soup. Okay. If I asked you to display a can of soup on the screen, you'd be able to display right there. Now, if I wanted to start stacking them vertically, I can actually I can click com Command, click on Text, and say Embed in V Stack. V stands for vertical. There's an H stack for horizontal and a Z stack for stacking things on top of each other, uh, you know, into the plane of the, uh, you know, through the plane of the screen. So we'll we'll get to what that looks like in a moment. So right now, if I tell you, show me a can of soup, and then I ask you to show me two cans of soup, you'll see they stack on top of each other. But you might be confused because when I say can of soup, before and after I embed it, when it's the only can of soup there, it looks exactly the same. And the reason is, is because imagine I had a can of soup and I gave it to you and I said, show me this can of soup. You would just show it to me. Now, if I, said, if I told you, why don't, can you show me the stack of all the cans of soup you have, but you still only have one can of soup, it would look exactly the same because you only have one, so there's nothing else to stack on. But now we have a stack that is the parent. So now when I add multiple stacks, it, it's ready to show me. When I have multiple cans, I mean, it's ready to show me all those cans on top of each other. So here it is, vertically stacking our cans of soup. Just so you understand that they're all different cans of soup, I'll change the words inside, OK? So let's go ahead and get rid of those again. So let's go back, make this say title. And now copy and paste it, and I wrote subtitle. So if you think about it, we're kind of making our way towards this title, subtitle. Okay. And as you know, we can add an image. So we've already talked about SF symbols in the previous video. So I'm going to use an SF symbol for now, just for simplicity's sake. I'm going to make an image with system name. And I'm going to choose, let's go look at what we got here, SF symbols. Let's say go to the music section. And we'll pick music.node. So music .no. Make sure you type these word for word. Okay. So this would be tv.music.note.fill. Okay. There's no enter here. So now, as you can see, I have three things stacked on top of each other. It's a vertical stack with an image and two texts. Okay. But they're in the center of the screen, and you're probably wondering how do I get things to move up or how do I get them to move down? Well, they created something called a spacer. So a spacer essentially likes to take up all the space. So it likes to shove everything up away from it. 
So if I have an image, a title, and a subtitle, well, if I put a spacer at the end, it's this is all the spacer, and it shoves everything upwards as high as it can go. And that's how you get this at the top of the screen. If I put a spacer on the other side, it shoves everything down. What I can actually do in addition is I can even put spacers between things. So it shoves them away from each other. And these two spacers, we can think of them as having equal priority. So they're, they're going to try to push everything as far away as possible. They try to get as big as possible, but none of, not one is more important than the other. So they try to equalize in size. So this spacer is the same size as this spacer. Okay. So what I'll do is if we look back at this and we think of this as, let's, if, we think, if we look at this, we really analyze it. It looks like we almost have a background and we have all these items scrolling over top of them. Okay. So our goal right now is we're going to try to just create this background. Okay. So picture, title, subtitle. Okay. And obviously this is not hugging the top margin here. Okay. It's not hugging this margin right here. It's not just hanging out right at the top. So we need, we need some extra room up top. Okay. So what I like to do, we have a couple options. I think in my opinion, I, I prefer to put a spacer up here, but I like to limit its height. So what I'll do is this spacer, I'll say that its frame has a height of 50. So now the spacer has a 50 pixel height. I could change it to 100 and you can see how that looks. So if I bring 150, brings it down another 100 pixels, 250, 350. So now it doesn't occupy infinite space. It doesn't try to get as big as possible. It gets exactly to the height that I specified. Okay. So that is how we got this border up here. Now we got our image. Now we got a title and we got a subtitle. Okay. So that explains how we can use the V stack to set up our background. Now, how do we get this stuff to scroll over top of it? So that's going to bring us into the idea of a Z stack. Okay. So a Z stack is something that lets us stack things into the plane of the screen. So let's go ahead and embed our V stack into a Z stack. So I'll say command, or you know, it might be a little easier if I just fold that up. So I can click command option at the same time, command option left, just minimizes everything. It's easier to look at. I can command option right and it reopens left, right, command, option, left, right. So I'm going to command option left fold. That's called code folding. I'm going to fold the code and I'm going to embed everything in a Z stack. And now that everything's in a Z stack, I can actually uh, manipulate uh, an extra layer. We can start layering things on top of each other. Now to make everything look a little cleaner, I'm going to select everything and don't forget this will really help you understand your, your the scope of your work as you as you work. So I'm going to click editor, structure, re-indent. Now everything is back to the, the indentation that, that's proper. So now I have this V stack and I want to add something on top of it. So for demo's sake, let's just put two texts on top of each other, okay? And we'll make this one say potato and we'll make this one say Alfredo. Do you see how those two of those are, are sitting right on top of each other? Well, that's what a Z stack does. So if a V stack moves things up and down and an H stack moves things left and right, a Z stack moves things in and out of the plane of their phone. So that's how this is able to roll on top of the background. That's how these items here are able to roll on top of the background. So what I'm going to want to do for this portion is I'm just going to want one of these. I'm going to want to create another V stack. Okay. We'll get rid of Alfredo for now. So you can think of the background as one V stack. Then you can think of the scrolling portion as another V stack. And you think of, you can think of these stationary buttons as a third Z stack or sorry, a third item in your Z stack that hangs out on top and never moves. Okay. So, what we'll go ahead and do is we'll create this scrolling portion up here. Okay. We'll ignore this animation. This animation is something we'll get to much further along in this series. So what we just want to create is this scrollable piece. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a spacer inside of this V stack. Okay. And I'm going to give this spacer a frame height of 100 pixels. Okay. Now this spacer, you, you can't see it right now because first of all, the spacer has a clear background. And second of all, the spacer has absolutely no, um, no width. So the, at a baseline, this, this spacer has a zero width. So what I'll actually, so first thing I'll do is I'll give it a non-clear background. So I'll say background. Okay, it's background of color dot red. But for some reason I still can't see it. So the reason I can't see it is because it has no width. So I'm going to actually give it a width as well. Width of fifty. And here we are. We have a spacer and it likes to sit in the center of the screen, okay? And that spacer has a width of 50 and a height of 100. It's exactly what we're looking for, and it has a red background, okay? And underneath that spacer, I'm gonna put another spacer that pushes it all the way to the top, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna say, this top spacer, instead of making it red, I'm gonna make it clear. And the one that's underneath it, well, let's keep it red for now, so you can get an understanding. So we'll say the frame of the, the one underneath it, let's give it a width so we can see it. It has a width of 200 pixels, and it has a background of color dot blue. And suddenly we can see how this blue spacer is pushing that red one up top, okay? And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make this clear, okay? What we're creating here so we're creating this clear section that allows us to see the background that's behind, okay? So what I'm realizing is that this needs to be a little bit bigger. This needs to be almost a 100. Does it need to be maybe 100 in height? So that's width, my apologies. Does it need to be 200 in height? Yeah, 200 would be just enough to give us the clearance to see what's behind it, okay? So this blue area is what will eventually contain all of these items. Okay, and this clear area is the overlaying portion that lets us see the background. Okay, and we'll continue on in the next video.